Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm the leader customer success manager for Clever Touch. I'm just going to go through the basics of our MDM solution. So what we have here is all of our devices that have all been enrolled into the uh, into the system, and we can see here that all of the commands that we associate with those devices are all grayed out because we haven't selected anything. If we select, for example, our Clever Touch screen, we can see now all of the settings come alive and we can actually remote onto the screen itself. There you go, that's the screen that's about 60 miles away. That is our Clever Touch there. Minimize that and go back. So how this first screen works, this is really, really important, is that we can customize how this screen looks. So what we've got here is the OS, the hardware, which is the MAC address, the IP address, quite an important one here, which is our agent version that's actually on the Clever Touch screen, the model, which is really useful, and indications here if we ever send any policies or kiosks to it. Now, if you have a system with lots and lots of devices, the idea really is to be able to group them and send certain things to only certain screens. What you'll notice is that a lot of these have got what we call tags on that you can put on in the enrollment procedure. What that means is if we wanted to, for example, send something to these two screens here, we can add a group for them. So if I go to my groups here and I go to my signage group, you'll see straight away it filters out those two. I could then select them both and technically send any kind of files, anything else to those two screens. If I go back to groups, go back to all, we're back to the first screen. Now, the idea with this is that we can manage all of our screens, and that's the idea with, uh, with MDM. So again, if we look at the Clever Touch here, I can go to it here, I can select it just here, we're now looking at that Clever Touch as if it was in front of us. What we've then got, different apps that are on there, and what this means is if somebody rings us up and says, we've got an issue with that app, can you do something? We can then say, right, okay, we can start it, stop it, enable it, disable it, and for further troubleshooting, we can also clear all of the app data. So we'll close that. As we've just said a minute ago, we can actually remote straight onto the screen, so again, this is really useful if, you, if you're doing any kind of troubleshooting. I can then control that screen from here. What we then look at is what we call our repositories actions. Now, this is quite useful because we can install packages. This is my kind of package repository. So this is where they're all labeled and installed. If I want to put Lynx whiteboard on all of devices that I've filtered out through the groups, I would just select it, hit apply. What we can also do with this is there's three ways that we can put things into that repository. We can upload the file um, and get the package from the Play Store if required. Close that. And the idea really with MDM is that we can create this lockdown environment. So what we can do is we can send policies. What this means is we can do things like disable browsers, we can do things like remove CleverShare, and every one of these is the same pattern. We use the pen to edit. And you can see what I've done here is anything that mentions a browser on the left, we've pushed to the right, which means that when we send this policy, all the browsers are blocked. So a really useful way of looking at things. If we close that and go to kiosk, this works in a slightly different way. This is now allowing certain things. So what we'll do now, is again, we'll have a look. This now changes from a block list to an allow list. Anything that I want the user to be able to see, I move from left to right. So in this instance, they can only go into links, note, and an old version of Clever Message. We can close that. So those two are a great way of kind of locking the Clever Touch down. What we can also do is go into device settings. So now we're actually locking down the Clever Touch itself. We can disallow multiple features. So in here, for example, we are stopping people from installing apps, stopping people from controlling the apps, and there's many others. We can stop people adjusting the volume. 
we can stop people adding users. So you can see that we're creating this lockdown environment. So if I close that, close the settings. The important thing with things like kiosks and policies, if you send a policy or a kiosk and you want to revert back, we need to send what we call a none policy. Okay, that clears it back. If we close the repository actions, we've got send message, so we can just send a quick text message, and that will say something like we need to remote onto it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Location with a like a clever touch screen works on IP. If you've got GPS on a mobile device, it will be a lot more accurate. We can lock and lock, get the password, we can wipe it, we can get a siren. And more importantly, we can restart the machine, we can shut it down, or we can uh, activate what we call a wake on LAN command. The manage section allows us to put tags on if we didn't do it at the start, remove from the account, rename, and also uh, re um, reset the authentication token. So this is something that sometimes happens when you enroll a device. The other thing that um, we need to look at is within repository actions and settings, we now have a new feature, which is power management. So this is a really useful feature whereby we can have a power on schedule, a power off schedule. We can even decide where it starts up, whether it's HDMI 1, 2, 3, Android, PC, etc. Close that. The other thing that we need to look at is the fact that every command that we send at the minute is what we call ad hoc. So this is our commands menu. This tells us really whether if we've sent a command, whether it's a success, and it tells us ad hoc or schedule. And what that means now is that not only can we send a command there and then, we can actually schedule any kind of command for the future. So back onto the clever touch, schedule and trigger command, give it a name, and this is a name that will actually appear in the commands menu. We can select a trigger that we've set up before, or we can use the pen to edit. So for example, shutting down my screen, I would then add that to the trigger command. And then what we do then is we pick one of these commands from the menu. And in this instance, it could be shut down, confirm. And again, if we go to this and have a quick look at the commands menu, you see now we've added a schedule. And depending on what time you put in, it will sit in pending for a while and then it will move across to success. Some other important things on here are that if you require to remote onto a screen like I did it a minute ago, by default that is set on. So what that means is that screen could be somewhere and it's waiting for somebody to say, yes, okay, you can remote in. And if that's in the school holiday, you've got an issue. So just make sure you turn this off, then anybody can get, get into that. That's that. And then on the left-hand side here, you've got a quick way of getting to the settings. We can also add users to this. So obviously you've got your admin or your owner user. And for example, this one here, I can go in and I can change that user's permission. So I can say, you know, I don't really want that user to be able to change any device settings. I don't want them to be able to wipe it, send any policies or kiosks, everything else I'm quite happy with. And then a couple of things on the admin side we can go to a dark theme if we want or keep it as a traditional. And we can check the profile. Uh, we can check the billing. So how many uh, tokens you've got. Close that. And at any point we can just go back to. The other thing as well that's really important on this very first screen, you'll see 
that we've got the connected devices, we've got how many are active, we've got um, obviously a, a map, but more importantly, we've got what we call recently enrolled devices. So any devices you put on recently will appear in there. Most used apps we've got as well. The last commands that we've sent. If it's green, it means that's been a success. If it's purple, it's pending. I can then drill down onto that. That just tells me that was pending. There you go, I've drilled into it and it tells me that's pending. So I've got a lot more information. And on the right hand side, it just gives me the OS distribution. So we can add other devices to the MDM, but you will use your, your sort of tokens for that. You can see here I've got one Windows, six Android. And then we can pop back to the dashboard. And there's my devices. And that is a, a very basic introduction to our MDM.